He was a high king of the Noldor, known for one of the greatest deeds in rescuing his cousin. And his early defeat of Morgoth's invading orcs would lead to the creation of the dragons. Today on Nerd of the Rings, we cover the life of Fingon. Fingon is born in the Years of the Trees 1260 in Tyrion, the city of the elves in Valinor. He is born to Fingolfin and his wife, Anaire. 235 years of the trees later, that is 2,232 of our own years, Morgoth and Ungoliant destroy the two trees and steal the Silmarils. In his rage, Feanor, Fingon's uncle, makes a great speech that moves the Noldor into exile to pursue Morgoth. We are told that while Fingon does not support his uncle, he is moved by Feanor's words and desires to see the wide lands of Middle-earth and rule a realm of his own. As Feanor leads the Noldor to the city of Alqualonde, he demands the Teleri elves give them their ships. When the Teleri refuse, Feanor's people attack, resulting in the first kinslaying, where elves would kill their own kind. Now there is some question as to whether Fingon himself played a part in the kinslaying, in the published Silmarillion we read, Moreover, Fingon and Turgon, that is Fingon's brother, were bold and fiery of heart, and loath to abandon any task to which they had put their hands until the bitter end, if bitter it must be. So the main host held on, and swiftly the evil that was foretold began its work. However, we see in Morgoth's Ring, the tenth volume of the History of Middle-earth, that Tolkien had at one point included an additional line in the text. Moreover, Fingon and Turgon, though they had no part in the deed, were bold and fiery of heart. There's certainly a lot of fan discussion and debate around exactly who took part in the kinslaying, but there definitely is the possibility that Fingon regrettably was involved in this horrible event. After killing the Teleri and taking their ships, the group travels north to Araman, where Feanor's people secretly take the ships and sail to Middle-earth. After arriving at the Firth of Dringist, Feanor's son and Fingon's cousin Maitros, with whom he is close, wishes to send the boats back for his cousin and the rest of the house of Fingolfin. Feanor, however, burns the ships rather than send them back. As the world is flat at this time, Fingon and his people can see the ships burning across the sea. And in this Year of the Trees 1497, they have no choice but to traverse the dangerous, frozen crossing at the far north of the world, the Helcaraxe. Fingon, along with elves such as his cousin Finrod and Galadriel, would follow his father Fingolfin as they cross the grinding ice, a journey which would claim many lives. While Fingolfin and all his four children would make this exile to Middle-earth, it's notable that his wife Anaire does not. She would choose to remain behind in Amman. The host would finally arrive in Middle-earth in the year of the trees 1500, meaning their journey took over 28 actual years. With the coming of the sun and moon, the first age dawns, and the scourge of Morgoth first strikes the family of Fingon. The host of Fingolfin is attacked in the Battle of the Lamoth, and while the elves would win the day, Fingon's younger brother Argon is killed. Having arrived in Middle-earth, Fingon learns of what has transpired with the House of Feanor. Feanor himself had been killed in battle shortly after their arrival, and his cousin Mithros, now in line to become High King of the Noldor, had been captured by Morgoth and was now left to hang upon the precipice of Thangorodrim. In the fifth year of the First Age, seeking to mend the relationship between their families, Fingon decides to take on the task of rescuing Mithros from the very land of Morgoth himself. Fingon travels alone, through darkness and in secrecy, searching Thangorodrim for his cousin, but he could not find him. In despair, yet also in defiance, Fingon takes out his harp and begins to sing a fair song of Valinor. Thus Fingon found what he sought, for suddenly above him far and faint his song was taken up, and a voice answering called to him. Mythros it was that sang amid his torment, 
But Fingon climbed to the foot of the precipice where his kinsmen hung, and then could go no further. And he wept when he saw the cruel device of Morgoth. Mithros, therefore, being in anguish without hope, begged Fingon to shoot him with his bow. And Fingon strung an arrow and bent his bow. And seeing no better hope, he cried to Manwe, saying, O king to whom all birds are dear, speed now this feathered shaft, and recall some pity for the Noldor in their need. His prayer was answered swiftly. Now, even as Fingon bent his bow, there flew down from the high airs Thorondor, king of eagles, mightiest of all birds that had ever been, whose outstretched wings spanned thirty fathoms. And staying Fingon's hand, he took him up and bore him to the face of the rock where Mithros hung. Fingon, however, could not break the Hellrot bond, and Mithros again begs Fingon to kill him. However, Fingon instead cuts off Mithros's hand, finally freeing him. Thorondor bears them both back to Hithlum. Fingon's deed is praised among the Noldor as one of their most mighty, and for the most part, the grievance between the two houses is healed. In response to being saved, Mithros waves his right to the high kingship of the Noldor and moves his people to the eastern lands of Beleriand. Thus, Fingon's father, Fingolfin, becomes the high king of the Noldor. Fingolfin's people would live in the lands of Hithlum, and the king would build the fortress of Bered Aithel on the eastern borders to keep watch across the plains for attacks from Morgoth. As for Fingon, he would rule over the lands of Dor Lomin in the south of Hithlum. In the year 60 of the First Age, the elves would secure a great victory over Morgoth in what is later known as the Dagor Agrileb, the Glorious Battle. This results in a 400-year siege of Angband, during which Morgoth's attempts of attacking the elves would be minimal. One such attack comes in the year 155, when he sends a force along the coast to Drengist in an attempt to attack Hithlum from the west. However, the Noldor spot the orcs, and Fingon's force crushes the host of Morgoth. It is in the wake of this battle that Morgoth decides orcs alone will not be enough to match the strength of the elves. Thus, the Dark Lord begins devising a new creature with which to wage war against his enemy, dragons. The first of their kind, known as the Father of Dragons, is Glaurung. Like all early dragons, Glaurung is wingless though he is a fire drake. In 260 of the First Age, just over 100 years since Fingon's victory, Glaurung emerges from Angband against Morgoth's wishes. At this time, Glaurung is still considered young and is only half grown. Still, he initially sees success in driving off the elves laying siege to Angband before the arrival of Fingon. As Glaurung defiles the lands of Ard Galen, Fingon leads a troop of archers on horseback to attack the beast. The half-grown dragon is unable to withstand the elven arrows and is forced to flee back to Angband, the secret of his existence now revealed to the elves. In the aftermath of Glaurung's defeat, a dwarf smith in the east of Beleriand named Telkar would craft a dragon helm, made in the likeness of Glaurung in defiance of Morgoth. Telkar, who would also craft the legendary sword of the Second Age, Narsil, would present the helm to his lord, Azagal, who would in turn gift it to Mithros. Mithros would then give the helm to Fingon, whose defeat of the dragon had inspired the helm. For nearly 200 years, the elves would enjoy the long peace, and their lands would grow in prosperity without attacks from the Dark Lord. During this time, Fingolfin gives the lands of Dor Lomin to their Manish allies, the House of Hador, the third house of the Edine. At this time, Fingon gifts the Dragon Helm to Hador, which would become an heirloom of his house, and is ever after known as the Dragon Helm of Dor Lomin. While Fingon's defeat of the dragon would be remembered on the helm and result in a long peace, Glaurung would return, fully grown and full of vengeance. In the year 455, Morgoth sends rivers of fire out from Angband, and Glaurung leads armies of Balrogs and Orcs in the Battle of Sudden Flame, resulting in death and destruction across the plains of Ard Galen. Seeing the fire and ruin, Fingolfin perceives the ruin of the Noldor, 
and rides across the plains to challenge Morgoth to single combat. Their great battle, told in full elsewhere, results in the wounding of Morgoth and the death of the king. Thus, Fingon, with the death of his father, becomes the new High King of the Noldor. Ard Galen, once a beautiful green plain, is now a charred desert and is renamed Anfauglith, meaning by gasping dust. Seven years after his duel with Fingolfin, Morgoth sends an army of orcs to attack Fingon's people in Hithlum. Galdor, the son of Hador of Dorloman, dies defending Aethel Sirion, leaving his son Hurin to take the lordship and command of the men loyal to Fingon. Hurin would lead valiantly, driving the orcs back across Anfauglith, while Círdan's forces assist Fingon from the west. The elves and men are victorious, and a great loyalty would continue to exist between the house of Fingon and the house of Hador. The free peoples would be next to turn to the offensive. Emboldened by the success of Beren and Luthien in retrieving a Silmaril from Morgoth's crown, the sons of Feanor, Fingon, the men of Dorloman, the dwarves of Belagost, and Easterlings unite in the Union of Maithros, a great alliance to make war upon Angband. As the Western and Eastern forces prepare to enact their plan, Fingon's brother Turgon arrives unlooked for, with a force of 10,000 elves from Gondolin. Upon seeing the arrival of his brother, Fingon, filled with hope, cries, Utulie Unaure! Aya Andalie Aratanatari! Utulie Naure! The day has come! Behold, people of the Eldar and fathers of men, the day has come! And all those who heard his great voice echo in the hills answered, crying, Auta in Lome! The night is passing! The resulting battle would be both great and pivotal in the history of Middle Earth, turning the tide of the entire First Age. At various points, the battle would sway between victory and defeat for the Union of Mithros. And while hope would be kindled when Fingon and Torgon would finally see the banners of Mithros, Morgoth would unleash his wolves, dragons, and balrogs, separating the armies and bringing wanton destruction. In this moment, Gothmog, the Lord of Balrogs, High Captain of Angband, would set his sights upon Fingon. He turned upon Fingon. That was a grim meeting. At last, Fingon stood alone with his guard dead about him, and he fought with Gothmog, until another Balrog came behind and cast a thong of fire about him. Then Gothmog hewed him with his black axe, and a white flame sprang up from the helm of Fingon as it was cloven. Thus fell the High King of the Noldor, and they beat him into the dust with their maces, and his banner, blue and silver, they trod into the mire of his blood. With the death of Fingon, the High Kingship passes to his brother Turgon of Gondolin. Seeing the certain defeat of their alliance, Hurin and his brother Huor tell Turgon to flee, for Gondolin must stand as long as possible so that Morgoth would still know fear. The men of Hithlum stand between Turgon and the forces of Morgoth, fighting to the death in hopes their sacrifice will someday bring about the end of the Dark Lord. In an echo of Fingon's earlier cry of the day has come, Hurin, each time he slays an orc or troll, cries out, Aure in Tulua. By the time he is buried under a mound of his dead enemies and captured, Hurin 70 times has declared, day shall come again. As always, I want to say a huge thank you to my Patreon supporters who make this channel possible. Tom DeBombadil19, Listen Me the Cinda, Kella Brimbor, The Mighty Mim, Team Weasel, Rabbi Rob Thomas, Charles Leisure, Toby Mobs Music, CCDC Red Team, Nerd Sigman Anytimer, Pelkey Sports Cards, Mookie the Brown, Christopher Carbaugh, Joe Tepper, Sky Carcass, Slide Belts, Dane Ragnarsson, Salim Rahman, Zetrock, Berto Berg, Grand Strategy Nerd, Graham Derricott, The Dark Haired One, Wyland, Michael Wu, Grant McGregor, and Debbie. If you enjoyed the artwork in this video, check out the artists in the description and purchase prints of their great work for yourself. Thanks so much for watching and subscribing, and we'll see you next time on Nerd of the Rings.